Another way of power back. Welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and in today's episode, we're going to be going through another big part of this latest update with the trains and microprocessors. And if you guys haven't guessed it already, it is not the trains, it's actually the microprocessors that I'm going to be jumping into today. And uh, don't worry, it's not going to be anything too advanced. I'm going to be going step by step, how, showing you guys how to build some simple, small um, microprocessors here today that'll save you a lot of space and help you to get uh, new and different logic into your build that um, actually probably could save you a little bit of time creating modules that you can use in later builds instead of having to set up that logic time and time again for new boats, trains, planes, or cars. So we'll jump right into it now. And if you guys haven't already realized when you've been in game, you see the microcontroller editor up here. We will jump straight into that and create a new microcontroller. And this is the first screen you're going to be jumping into where we've got our schematic over here. We have symbol, logic, and properties on this side. We're going to be naming it clutch control. And for the description, we're just going to say it controls the clutch. TCH. And now what we've got up here, we have a width and length. And it's talking about how big the actual block, the output of it will be. And of course, the smallest as you can make is a one by one and max is a six by six. And for this build, we're going to be doing a one by two here because we need one input and one output. And that is where the logic nodes come in here. As we add a source in here, we're getting one block on here. Like if you guys remember all the other logic blocks in game, we have these little symbols to um, denote an input or output and we add a node in here and that'll pop in right there. When you keep adding in nodes, they always start in this bottom part. So you will have to move them over to another spot in your build. But we have our input here and then we're going to put an output down here with that drop down menu and we're going to change it to a number and I'll show you guys what I will be doing with that in a second here and of course if you guys do want to create a fancy little symbol you can um, go wild with some artistic style down here creating the best uh, art you can for me I'm going to draw a little clutch type of design and then once you've got your masterpiece done, we're going to jump up into this logic and it gives you the input and output here. And all we have to do for this little system is grab our two constant numbers and a numerical switch box. And if you're wondering where I'm getting these values, it's just like the regular workshop, but we have a logic gate menu instead of that. Of course, we can search it or look in the different sections. And for today's video, of course, I'm not going to be going into the composite values right now. And to be honest, I don't exactly know all the things about the composite values, so it would be difficult for me to teach you everything on them if um, or explain them to you guys if I didn't know everything. But I am working to learn all of them uh, probably as I speak. But anyway, we're going to be jumping into a lot of the values up here because they are the main values you would use for a lot of the logic on your ships. And we just have to connect up these values just like you do on a regular thing. Just imagine this being a wall on your ship and these boxes are like the numbers, numerical switch box and output. And all I have to do is find that on value there and change the output value from 0 to 1. And like the rest, um, when you put something in the workshop and you want to change the value, like if we take a PID controller, excuse me and we put that down here and we want to change the values all you have to do is left click on it and we can change our let's say we're building a jet we can change to the standard jet values I can't remember them exactly right now but for now we are going to delete that and we're going to go back to the design and it should be pretty much done I believe we have this finished up and I'll just save over the other clutch controller I've got there and when we go back into our regular menu here, we see if you go back into your inventory from the top down, when you scroll all the way to the bottom, we have our workshop microcontrollers. If you have downloaded any and your own microcontrollers and the named one should come up here. We can take our clutch control and all I have to do is slap that onto the build you have now. 
And then you need your clutch, of course. And your button. And of course, like we had it, like we designed this little microcontroller, we have the input from a button over here and the output to the clutch. And of course, just like the logic we would have laid out here somewhere on this block, we have stored all in this and it's, it's amazing. It saves you so much room and I'll show you guys in a few minutes how much room it actually saved me on uh, a couple, well actually one of my builds now. But now that we've got the clutch controller done, I'll go back into the editor and let's see another one be created. And of course, another thing you can do, you can save a, a bit of room just by taking um, regular logic values from our logical system here, like our N and, nor, not, or, any of these values, you can throw it into here and actually save maybe a block or two depending on it because we've made this a three by one here. It actually does save us a little bit of room. All right, now that you guys do know the basics, I'm gonna go into a little bit more advanced. And of course, if you guys ever do have any questions, I'm always on my Discord, or you can shoot a comment down below if you do need any help. I'm happy to help anyone that does need it. But I have a uh, microcontroller. If you guys do know um, Jeb Sanders, the guy that created the jet, um, the jet that produces power, that's like part of a jet type of thing. I've used it for a couple of my builds now, but that thing uses so much logic and so much space but um, I boiled it down to a 2x4 block here of logic putting in um, two numerical inputs for turbine RPS battery and then I've got three numerical outputs for our second clutch our clutch and electric engine and the jet speed as well and then we have a start stop value as well as the output for the stop value and I'll show you why we have these two here as we jump into the logic actually and don't go mad here looking at this picture it isn't nothing it isn't anything you haven't seen before if anyone has looked at any logic just on the wall it's just superimposed on this new scale so we have a couple inputs going in here so this be like this is like a line from our button we connect up to this microcontroller with the stop value. Of course, we connect up to the battery value here, turbine RPS down here, and our start value as well. And then we have a couple outputs after the values run through everything here to our second clutch, our first clutch, our jet speed as well as our stop and as you can see there's actually two logical things happening here there's more than one microprocessor it's subdivided if we actually took this thing and moved it all the way over here you can see two distinct systems happening this huge thing to calculate the speed of the jet that needs to run and controlling the clutches off of that as well when it hits its desired speed and we have the stop value over here which the only thing that needs to happen to it is this not value so if you actually wanted to make a huge block for a ship you could take all of your logical values and put them into one microcontroller and basically you can like what I've got here but you can make it bigger throw in let's say one or two more buttons if you also need on your ship let's find our input and output here and if we need another numerical switch box on here we can connect this up on the same um, the same picture here as well and this will all be built into that one little box on your ship and you don't have to deal with any of these things um, anywhere on your boat. You don't have to allocate so much space for logic anymore. And of course we want to change that constant number. And the nice thing is these will not interfere with these guys over here. They are totally different systems unless you start connecting up values from here, there and everywhere. But that's just like a um, when you're connecting logic points up to a ship. And we've got all that logic in a 5x2 block that'll save you so much space. And I know I've, say, I've said save you so much space probably 20 times now. I do apologize, but it's the thing that's revolutionizing this game. And I'm really happy to play with, but it is a nightmare to try and get some of these things done when you get huge systems of logic running in here. I mean, it takes a little while to work through, just like um, on a boat. 
And actually, it might help you a bit because it makes it a bit neater. Being able to move these values by left clicking and dragging these boxes anywhere you need them is a great feature in my mind because instead of having it like to a fixed point on a boat where you have to connect this to like over there and it's got to run back over here and you have all these wires running everywhere it, it's a crazy thing to do and to manage and it, it takes a lot of time as well and just save time because of course you can create specific microcontrollers save them in this thing like we can load up a couple of different ones I've designed already and use them over and over again we don't have to keep creating this for new boats and of course you could have merged um, like a logical part of your boat to a new one but um, that's not always the case for everyone of course and that's pretty difficult to do as well but this all we have to do is slap on the thing onto our base here and we're good connect up some logical points and it's running and real quick, while I'm on the point of it, I'll actually show you guys how much space that um, controller actually saved me on my Voyager A. Here is the old version of the Voyager A with all the logic, and actually this entire section up here is dedicated to the logic, and I believe I actually have some, yeah, there's some down here as well logic running two different things on the ship as well as in the engineering room we have a bit more logic as well and i've taken all that logic and in the new version i've made it to a i think it was a a six by two block i'll show you real quick and here is the new version with the cool microprocessor and yeah it is a six by two block right here that is doing all the logic for my ship right now. I don't have anything scattered around here, there, everywhere, um, messing up my design or anything. This is all I needed. It's pretty sleek. And um, it's more than just the logic that was filling up like 75% of this. It, it does run a couple of different things as well. And it is a pretty cool system here that I've got this really small block to take um, all that stuff and um, compress it into here. But I know I did talk a lot about um, the compressed logic and I assume you guys are tired of hearing me say that but of course um, I hope you guys did uh, find how to use the um, microprocessor editor here pretty well for my video and if you do need any help of course I am always in my discord and I will respond to comments as quickly as I can get to them but I'll show you guys the horror of um, a video upcoming let's just try to find composite values and this is actually an incorrect way to do it I um, messed it up a bit here but I'm I've been working with um, MRN Jersey and a few more other people actually to get the composite values working for trains and stuff so that we actually do have working um, composite values to go through those um, connections between carts but yeah that is about all the time I do have for today. If you guys like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks, microprocessors, and more of my content. But, I've never been great goodbyes, my people need me, and I need to go.